Oh, I tell you, the blueprint, God's Word, is the one to explain the program of how we must be born again. First, we reckon ourselves sinners and worthy of condemnation. And we are all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. There's not a sound parcel of us. Our minds are bad. Our soul is corruptible. Our constant thinking is evil. Every imaginary thought of a man's mind is evil. A sinner. And also that our body is weak. Our spirit is no good. And we're just full of corruption. And how could one corruptible thing bring another good thing out of a corruptible? Let me say this. That in Job 14th chapter, he said, Seeing that man is born of a woman is full of sorrow and trouble. Yea, he cometh forth like a flower, he fadeth away. And on as the prophet goes on speaking, he said, Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one! You stick your bucket down into the well and pull out a bucket of water and it's stagnant. It stinks. You look in it and it's muddy. And little worms is in that water. There's no way at all to put your bucket back and get a clean bucket. The whole well is contaminated. And the whole soul, mind, and body of man is contaminated with sin. Born in sin physically. Shaped in iniquity. And come to the world speaking lies so that his own soul is contaminated. Nothing good. One cannot redeem the other. Because it's all wrong. You can't take a bucket full of water here that's contaminated and another bucket full that's contaminated and mix them together. you got more contamination. There's no purification to it. But God determined to save man. He placed upon him the iniquity of us all. The penalty of of sin that you're born in, the penalty of sin is death. Sin is death. And the penalty was so great that there's none of us could help the other. So there had to be someone who could pay this penalty. What if this morning the penalty to leave this room was a hundred billion dollars? There's none of us could leave. Because there's none of us worth that. But then if one came in, who was worth enough to pay for all of us? It takes one. We can't do it. It took one who was worthy. Amen. Oh, how I wish I could stop here for a while. And go back and pick up Ruth and Neoma. And show that how the kinsman redeemer to redeem the falling estate had to be first worthy. Amen. Had to be a kinsman. Therefore, God, the Spirit, Jehovah, became kinfolks to us. By taking on the form of flesh. He became kin, folks. Had to be that. Then he had to be worthy. And he is the one who produced that fountain filled with blood, 
drawn from Emmanuel's veins. He was the one who bore our iniquities. A beautiful type. I got your numbers. I've got my scriptures wrote down here. Uh, and numbers. The beautiful type of it is. And there it's. Oh, it's altogether pretty. If you could see it. It's the brass serpent. Lifted up in the wilderness. How that Israel. That serpent to them was a death bite. And there was no remedy. There wasn't a physician among them who had the remedy of the cure. They had physicians among them. But not for that bite. Just as I've said, there's no physicians among us that can cure sin. It's a death bite. And we're all guilty. All shaped in iniquity. All of us are guilty. But what did God do? They was guilty then. Then death had to be paid. The penalty of death. But God had Moses to erect the brass serpent. And put it on a pole. That nothing the people could do. No money they had to pay. Nothing at all. No creeds they had to recite. No churches they had to join. Just look and live. See how simple? Look and live. Don't join a church. No sensation. You don't have to feel the funny feeling. Just look and live. That's all. So simple. Not if you can remember all the Ten Commandments, you live. Not if you know all the statutes. Just look and live. That's all you had to do. And every man looked upon him and lived. Jesus, when he was here on earth, he said, talking to Nicodemus here, He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So must. Why? In the same manner. For the same thing. The same purpose. To do the same work. Many times it's puzzled people when they see the serpent representing Jesus. The serpent represented Jesus in this much. Did you notice the serpent was dead? Amen. There was no life in it. Jesus died. Like Cain, when he slew Abel, Abel died on the altar with his sacrifice. After Abel offered his sacrifice and killed his sacrifice for his sin, then he died on the same altar with his sacrifice. In order to be born again, you have to die on the altar with your sacrifice, just as dead as he was. And you were born again. The serpent had no life in it. And you say, why was it brass? Brass represents judgment. Divine judgment. Did you notice in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the altar was made out of brass where the sacrifice is burnt? Brass speaks of judgment. Like Elijah. In his days, he went to look at the skies to see if any rain was coming after his prayer. And he said, the sky looks like brass. What was a divine judgment upon an unbelieving people, an unbelieving nation who had forsaken God. It was divine judgment. Brassy. And the serpent itself, its form, represented sin already judged. For the serpent was judged in the Garden of Eden. And he was 
the serpent judged. And when we look at Christ, you see the penalty. The only one God himself made flesh. God coming to the earth and took on him the sin of all of us. And the judgment and wrath of Almighty God was poured out upon his body. And there it was riven at the cross. That's the real judgment. He tread the winepress of the wrath of God alone. Alone he walked the road. Alone he died. With not no help from an angel. From a man, from his church, from his mother, from his brethren, from his father. Forsaken by God, man and nature. He died alone. To show us that even nature itself can't help us in the hour of death. There's no friend, no priest, no pope, no pastor. It's death. But there was one who took it for us. (laughs) No life in the serpent. It was absolutely crystallized. That was the penalty. He died until the the earth got ashamed of itself. He died until the stars got ashamed. He suffered until the sun wouldn't shine. He suffered until the moon turned off its lights. He suffered till even the elements of the earth was so black and dark until it was midnight so dark you could feel it. It wasn't nothing. No one's ever suffered like that or could suffer like that. There's no marvel could go through it. But he suffered it. God laid upon him the iniquity of us all and passed his judgments upon him. And he tread the winepress of the wrath of God alone. With no help. There was nothing to help him. God placed the penalty. Everything was under that penalty. And nothing could help him because we were all guilty. There's no high priest could have come help him. There was nothing could help him. No pope. No angel. Everything stood back and watched it. It was the greatest moments ever in the history of the world. He died until there's not one drop of life left in him. Become like the brass serpent, just a crystallized ornament hanging on the cross. 